remarks. I appreciated uh, the opportunity to hear what he had to say. And President Mullen, thank you for the opportunity to be with everyone this morning. Uh, your hospitality is always welcome. And I always appreciate the opportunity to be down here with so many friends. A month ago, I came to Atlantic City and I spoke to the AFL-CIO. And I regret to tell you that the remarks that I gave then are essentially the same remarks that I'm going to give today. And so if you're looking for a refund, you can see Billy later. But the reason my remarks haven't changed is because the issue hasn't changed. The issue that we face in New Jersey, we face nationally, but particularly in New Jersey, is the issue of jobs and job creation. The number one concern facing New Jersey families uh, throughout the state, no matter where you hail from, whether you're from Sussex or Cape May or Middlesex or Union, whether you are a Democratic household or a Republican household, is the state of our economy, and in particular, where are the jobs going to come from? It's, a, it's an issue that concerns us, the legislature, as much as it concerns you here. It's an issue that we need to address more clearly, more concisely. And we've done things over the past several weeks and months, as you heard President Mullen describe, about job creation, but we still need to do so much more. We need to make sure that we are creating jobs for our families, for people to earn good salaries and good wages so they can be part of what makes New Jersey a great state, and contribute to our state, and make our state able to do the things that we all agree that we need to do. Without having people working, the state of New Jersey doesn't have the revenue it needs to help educate our children, to help provide student loans for our sons and daughters. It doesn't have the money to provide quality health care. And all of the things that we have come to expect in a state like New Jersey, a state we're very proud. So today, as we sit here in Atlantic City, New Jersey has endured nearly three years of 9% unemployment. And that's a number that is not only above the national average, but alarmingly, it is also above the regional average, the states that are around us who seem to be doing better, who seem to be creating more jobs than we're able to do here. And for the building and construction trades, that number 9%, that's not a real number, because the number is higher, and you know that. And for the last several years, the number has been the highest it's been for the past 10 years. And so at times like these, when people are hurting and they can't find work, they have an expectation. They have an expectation that their elected leaders, the people they send to the Senate, that they send to the General Assembly, the people they elect to lead the state, are going to harness the powers of government, that are going to recognize that government can play a role in making the quality of life in the state better, that government has an ability to create jobs and spread economic prosperity. Government is not the problem in this. Government can be the solution. We need to embrace that concept because if we subscribe to the notion that government should have no role in addressing unemployment, if government should have no role in creating jobs, we know that projects like Rebel down the street here and projects across the state that depend on government acting would not exist. And so we need to understand that government can play a role, that government should play a role, and that we need to work together to make sure that government does play a role. And so I want to make sure you understand that I'm not coming here today to say that nothing has happened. There have been successes. Uh, despite budget problems and disagreements, uh, the legislature and the governor were able to come together in support of a transportation bill that you heard uh, your president mention that is going to fund transportation for the next several years, that's going to make sure that the work, you know, if you travel down the parkway to get here, if you travel across the Atlantic City Expressway, or if you were on any road, local road in New Jersey, you know how desperately our transportation infrastructure needs help, needs money, and this bill will make sure that we have it. Uh, in conjunction with uh, Senator Norcross and other sponsors, I was working on the higher education reorganization legislation, which we passed on June 28th. And that bill uh, was coupled with a higher education bond act, which is going to be in front of the voters. And with the passage of that bond act, we have the ability to do two things. We have the ability to create jobs, which is very critical. But we have the ability to improve the quality of higher education. And that's an investment that we need to do 
not simply because it creates jobs, but by making that investment in higher education, we bring investment from pharmaceutical companies and from industry around the world. We identify New Jersey as a place to come and grow, and that creates even more jobs. And so again, an example of where government can play a role and should play a role, and we need to make sure that we continue to advocate for that. And at the beginning, And at the beginning of the economic crisis, at the very beginning, uh, we had a leader in this state uh, that signed a piece of legislation, the Economic Stimulus Act of 2009. I was proud to be a sponsor of it. I was there when the governor signed it. Governor Corzine signed this legislation that provided tax credits and incentives to uh, support development and redevelopment projects throughout the state. Again, an example of government stepping in and providing the incentive for private business to create the jobs and create the economic activity. Each of these programs has had or will have a positive impact on the creation of jobs for New Jersey families. But as we know, just by looking at the statistics, as much as we've done, we need to do so much more. As much as we've done, it's not enough, and we need to look at ways to continue that type of initiative in New Jersey. The economic crisis that we have in our country is probably the worst that anyone has seen since the Great Depression. Those aren't my words, those are the words of economists around this nation. And they've said two things, that it requires leadership and it requires innovation to fix the problem. We're not going to be able to get out of the economic slump that we're in simply by going back and looking at the old policies that have been tried year and year after year and see if they work this time, because we know a lot of cases they haven't. There's a word, or there's a, two characters in Chinese. Uh, it's the word for crisis. And in the Chinese language, the word for crisis is made up of two characters. One is the character for danger. The other is the character for opportunity. And so while we have this enormous crisis that faces our country with not enough job creation, especially here in New Jersey, we ought to recognize that we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity by taking bold leadership. What we need to do is find additional ways to put people back to work. I mentioned the Transportation Trust Fund that we recently reauthorized. No one in the room should assume that transportation is solved. No one in the room should assume that we have now secured transportation funding for the foreseeable future. We have engaged in an act of political necessity, a bill that will fund transportation for several years. But we have to use those several years to look at the long road, to look at the fact that we don't have a funding source for transportation, that we need to politically, both sides of the aisle, agree on that funding source, because if your history is any indicator, Back when the trust fund started under Governor Tom Kane, a Republican, Democrats and Republicans came together, embraced a way of funding, embraced it together, and understood that together that was economic prosperity for our state. But we also have to be careful not to throw away opportunities. Now we talk about the need to create jobs. We recently had an opportunity to create 6,000 jobs. And it's a little old, but I think it is emblematic of the kind of leadership we need or we don't have. We had the arc tunnel. Started construction. I was up at a groundbreaking. That got canceled. It got canceled because of fears of cost overruns that have since been proven not necessarily true. But what we lost in all of the political rhetoric there was the 6,000 jobs that that would have created and the economic activity that those 6,000 jobs would have created because every single one of the men and women who work there pay mortgages, go out to dinner, buy clothes, pay tuition, and the money seeps through the economy. And so while we can say that that's old news, think about the difference those 6,000 jobs would have made for our economy. And think about that the next time we talk about the need for leadership to get our economy moving, to get our state moving in the right direction. One of the things that I've heard, not only in this state, but around the country, is that America has always been a place where we've dreamt big. And whether it's digging tunnels under the Hudson or, or building large public works projects, that was the engine that historically fed 
the middle class and made the American economy hum, whether it was building the interstate or building skyscrapers or building water systems. And now as we uh, approach this economic difficulty that our nation has, it seems that we no longer as a nation dare to dream big. But what we have to do is understand that unless we dare to dream big, and unless we set our sights on big things, we're not going to have the ability to expect big results. We need a lot of jobs created. Small measures, temporary measures. While we, they're better than no measures, we need to do big things, and we need to do them soon. And so whether it's the trust fund, which is a lost opportunity, but we can still work on it, or the arch tunnel, what we need to set our sights on are ways to make more jobs. You saw on the Star Ledger this past Sunday about a proposal in New Brunswick to invest through the Economic Development Authority $300 million to build dormitories, to build classrooms. Good paying jobs would come out of that. The one problem was is that the program that was going to fund it ran out of money. Working with my colleague, Assemblyman Putino, who's in the back of the room, we were able to sponsor legislation to put more money in that program so that work could get started. But amazingly, even though the program exists, the people are there, the applications are there, everybody knows how it works, we're now hearing from the administration that it could take three to six to nine months to actually get that money free. We can't wait that kind of time to get these projects started. There are people who need this work now. There are people who are losing their homes every single day. And I can't understand for the life of me why, on a project that already exists, we have to wait that type of time. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to be here today to say just really a couple of simple things. We have choices that we can make. We have choices we can make this year. In this year's elections, we have choices that we can make in next year's election. But the choices are all, honestly, yours. And you've heard from your national president about the threat of incredible sums of money that will be put into this campaign and probably be put into others. And so the historic dynamic where you, through your, your members and your leaders, shoe leather has walked door to door and gotten the message out to whichever candidate, that now gets obliterated by vast sums of money who don't have the interests of organizations like this at heart, who don't have the interests of working men and women at heart, whether you're Democrat or Republican, when you have somebody who can write a $5 million check as easy as you can put a $5 chip down at a table out here, that's pretty scary. But that's American politics today. And so when we're talking about 2012, and when we're talking about 2013, putting my hat on as party chairman, Obviously, I think it's always a good thing to vote Democratic, but what you have to do is you have to look at those individuals who are candidates, and you have to make sure that the commitment they have to what you want to see is real, not just idle words, not just about what we'll get to it down the road, but let's solve the problems today. Let's solve the problems today by moving the bureaucracy that holds up that money for a Rutgers project. Let's get that done quickly. Let's find a way to fund our transportation trust fund so we can have certainty that not just for the next five years, not just for 10 years, but for the foreseeable future, we know that road work and mass transit work is going to get done in this state. The answer lies in this room. This answer lies within all of us. That we have it within our ability to make the changes necessary in this state, to have real leadership that's going to take us to the next level to create the kind of jobs that are important, not only to your members, but to the entire middle class and the people of the state of New Jersey. I'm here today to say I want to fight that fight with you. I want to make sure that we can take New Jersey from being 47th in job creation to number one. Let's do it together. Let's work hard to get it done. Thank you all.